Good morning, my friends. Time for us to get started. What we're going to do today is set up your work just like this. We're not going to do a word problem today. What we're going to do is we're going to try to solve a number sentence. And this number sentence is going to end up being more than 100, and it's going to get us working on our numbers past 100. So go ahead and set it up, and then we'll begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to solve the problem 58 plus 58. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw a picture. Now yesterday I told you that we had to make sure our tens were together and our ones were together. So we need to make sure that we do that. The other thing you need to know is how many tens and how many ones are in the number 58 and then again 58. So hopefully you said we have five tens and eight ones. So I'm going to draw five tens. And then I'm going to draw eight ones. And I want you to do the same thing. So I have five tens and eight ones. Then what I have to do is, again, draw five tens and eight ones. Now, we have to make sure that we put our five tens next to the other five. So here's five here. We're going to put the other five here. One, two, three, four, five. And now we have to make eight ones. Now, before we just go ahead and draw our eight ones, we need to stop and think about something. I already have eight right here. How many more do I have to add to eight to make it another 10? Right, two. So what we're gonna do is, when I draw my eight, I'm gonna make sure I put two here and then the rest here. So watch this and do it with me. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I can go ahead and make this another 10 stick. Now, I want to show you something, and this is what I really want you to pay attention to. Let's count how many 10s we have. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 tens. So I have 11 tens, and now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ones. Okay? 11 tens and 6 ones. Now, Remember I said to you, I can't have more than nine here. If I had a 10 here, I'd have to bring it over here, right? Into the tens. Now, same holds true here. I can't have more than nine tens. Once I hit 10 and above, I have to move this one over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna move it here. So my number and my answer is 100 and then you know that's the number 16. So this is 116. So that's our answer. So again, you have to remember, you can't have more than nine in each of those columns. Once you hit 10, you have to swing it over to the next place value. So let's, let's write our problem down here. We have 58 plus 58. And we're gonna hopefully come up with the same answer. Now, we're going to do it the tens and ones way. So watch this. We're going to break apart this into tens and ones. So listen to it. 58. So I have 50 and 8. Okay? We're going to circle this. Now, watch how we do this. Okay? So we have 58 plus 50 equals something. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the hundreds chart first. So we're gonna start with 58. We have to add 50 to it. Remember, every time we add a 10, we're jumping down a box. So to add 50, we have to jump down five times. So here we are at 58, we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So our answer to this is 108. Now, I wanna show you something. If you didn't use a hundreds chart and you needed to figure it out, could you have done this? Five plus five is 10. And then I know my eight doesn't change because eight plus zero is eight. You could have done it that way as well. But now we're not done. We have to bring the 108 down and add it to the number that I didn't use, which is eight, okay? Now, that's gonna give us an answer. Now, this is what you're gonna do. We can punch 108 and count up eight. We could do that, but I want to show you something different. We know these are ones and these are ones. My hundred isn't changing, is it? Because I didn't add an extra hundred to it. So I know I have 100, but 
my other part is what I'm adding. So if I cover up that 100, I basically have 8 plus 8. What's 8 plus 8? You know your double stacks. 16. So I can go ahead and write 16 right here. And again, it matches my number up here. But again, I want to show you using the 120s chart. So I'm at 108. I need to add 8 more. So when you're adding, you're going to just move forward by 1s. So we're adding 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 116. So you came up with your right answer. So here's the answer here. Are you with me so far? I sure hope so. I know this is getting a little more complicated, but this is where those mathematical minds have to kick in. You really have to start looking at numbers differently, okay? So now, let's come over here, and we're going to write it again. 58 plus 58. Now this time, what we're going to do is we're going to make a 10. Now, if I look at this, if I'm at 58, remember, all of these are our 10s. So, What's the closest 10 to 58? You got it, it's 60. So what we're gonna try to do is we have to bring this number up to 60. So if I break apart this one, how many do I need to give to 58 to make it 60? Well, if I cover up the five and I have only the eight, eight plus, yes, two equals 10. So that means that 58 plus two is gonna bring us up to that 60. So now, you might be thinking, well, how am I gonna figure that out? Well, again, cover up your tens because we're only dealing with ones here. So 50 something is left, right? Well, eight minus two, eight, seven, six. So it should be 56. See what I'm doing? So you have to identify what's changing. And in this case, it was the ones. So I knew my five was still gonna be there. My 50 was still gonna be there. It was just the ones that were changing. So now I can go ahead and circle these two because 58 plus two equals 60. Now, I'm gonna bring the 60 down and add it to my 56. Well, that seems kind of tricky, doesn't it? But if you just break it apart, I think it'll be okay. So watch this. What is 6 plus 5. Well, here's your thought. 6 plus 6 is 12. So 6 plus 5 needs to be one less, which is 11, right? And let's check it. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we know that our we have 11 10s, and my 1s don't change because 0 plus 6 is 6. So my answer again is 116. And the last way we're going to look at it is by doing it the good old fashioned way. So we're gonna write it like this. Make sure we have our box. Now, eight plus eight. We've said it so many times already. Eight plus eight is 16. Now, I can't write 16 down here. That's only where my ones go. My tens go up here. 16 is one ten and six ones. So I have one ten and six ones. Now I need to say, what's one plus five? Well, one plus five or five plus one is six. And then six plus the number you didn't use, which is five, is your 11. So my answer is, again, 116. So there's so many different ways for you to do this. I know a couple of them are a little trickier than others, but I just wanna give you several different ways for you to solve the same problem. And I want you to realize how you write your numbers beyond 100. Hold on for the next part of our lesson. All right, so here's our answer, 116. What I wanna do is I just wanna show you how you break this number down and what it actually looks like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, make our tens and ones frame, but it's gonna actually have hundreds, tens, and ones. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back up a little bit. I want us to only take a look at the number 16, okay? Now, watch what happens. If I have the number 16, and I had, say I had 16 ones, can I write it like that? No, I can't. What I have to do is I have to take this one and move it over there. So as I do that, I'm gonna have one 10, and I'm going to have 
six ones. So there's my 16. Now, what happens when I have 11 tens and six ones? Again, I can't have 11 here. That's only where my tens belong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one out of here and move it here. So now I have 100 and then we know that number is 16. So what does it look like in a number bond? Well, let's take a look. I have the number 116, okay? Now, I'm gonna break it down into hundreds, tens, and ones, just like we would do for the 16. So let's do 16 first. So let's think about it. 16 is 10, six, right? 10, six. So that's 16. Well, where's the 100 go? Well, right here. So we have 100 here. 100 plus 10 plus six should give us 16. So, or 116, so let's check it out. So watch this. I'm gonna do 100 plus 10 plus six. See how I line those all up nicely? I'm even gonna draw my lines down for you so you can see. So again, these are my hundreds, my tens, and my ones. Do you see how I did that? So now, let's add. Well, we know when we add a number to zeros, our answer is that number. So we have six ones, we have one plus zero, which is 110, and then we have one plus all zeros again, which is one one, or yeah, one plus zero is one. So you have 116. So I just wanted you to see the breakdown of what 116 actually is. So it ends up being 100, 110, and six ones. And again, remember, when we drew it out, it looked something like this. We had 11 tens, and then we had six ones. That's what it looked like when we drew it out. So, keep all of this in mind, and I know it's gonna take a little while for, get, for you to get used to, but it's gonna help you when you go on to module six. Today we're gonna to review time. We've talked a little bit about time and we're just gonna hit on it a little bit more today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking a good look at the parts of the clock. So here I have a clock and when I look at the clock, the clock actually has a face to it. The face has the numbers on it, the face has the hands on it and it tells us a lot of information. So let's take a look at what it tells us. Well, we know that it has numbers. At the top is a 12, and then it goes from one all the way back around to the 12. Then we have something called an hour hand. The hour hand is the short hand. That tells us what hour we are in. And then we have this longer hand, which is the minute hand. That goes around, and it tells us how many minutes are past the hour. Now, you need to know there are 60 minutes in an hour. And so this little blue hand goes all the way around, and once that goes all the way around, it actually moves the short hand, the hour hand, to the next hour. So it takes 60 minutes for it to go all the way around to get to that next hour. So sometimes what you'll also see is something called a second hand. There are 60 seconds in a minute. A lot of times in school you'll see our second hand, we have a second hand there. But that just tells us there are 60 seconds in a minute, so that moves the minute hand, and then the, there's 60 minutes in an hour, so once that, that minute hand goes around 60 times, then it brings the hour hand to the next hour. The other thing I want you to notice is this. A lot of times you're gonna see little lines, just like these, in between each of the numbers. Those are your minutes. Each one of these numbers represents five minutes. So, what you gotta do is you have to remember how to count by fives. So, I'm gonna count five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. See, 60 minutes are in an hour. So, tomorrow what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how to break up the clock and tie it into our shapes. But for today, what I want you to notice is this. Take a look at this clock. What time is it telling us? Well, it tells us it's five because we read the hour first. The hour hand is pointing to the five. 
so it's five. And when that minute hand is pointing to the 12, just like this one is, it is o'clock. Now, I want you to think of the O as a zero. That means it's zero minutes past the hour. So it's o'clock, okay? So this clock here is showing five o'clock. Now, what I wanna show you is this. We can write five o'clock. We can write it a couple different ways. We can write it five o'clock. We can just write it out just like that. But if you were looking at, say, a watch, or if you were looking at a digital clock, we would see something like this. There would be a five, and this is called a colon, and zero, zero. So five o'clock looks like this. And a lot of times you'll see it, it's in like a little box just like this. So in your homework today, what it's gonna ask you to do is to match up your time. And it's only gonna be time to the hour. So what you need to do is you need to read the clock. And again, you're reading it by looking at the hour first. That's that shorthand. So whatever that shorthand is pointing to, that's going to be your first number. And then they're all going to be o'clocks. So that means that that minute hand should be pointing to the 12 each and every time. And this is how you write it. So on your first page, we're going to be on lesson 10 today. So on your first page, what you're going to do is you're going to be matching your clocks. So here's the clocks here. Here's the, the digital clocks, just like this one here. All you're doing is drawing a line matching the times up. Now on the second page, what it wants you to do is it actually wants you to write the time. So when you write the time, you don't have to write it out five o'clock, six o'clock. You can write it just like this. So make sure that you um, understand that the first number is the hour, the second number is the minutes past the hour, and if it's pointing to the 12, then that means that there are zero minutes past the hour, so two zeros. This should be pretty easy for you. So take your time, go through it. If there's any problems, please let us know. And then tomorrow, I believe we're gonna be going on to time to the half hour. So it'll get a little trickier.